In today's tutorial, we're going to look at how our body communicates using hormones and nerves. The first aim is can you simply describe how cells communicate using hormones? Then can you outline the differences between nervous and hormonal communication? And can you explain how nerve cells communicate with each other through synapses? I just want to remind you at this stage that this only indicates relative difficulty. These could all appear in the foundation paper. So just like we need to communicate with other organisms, our cells which make us up need to communicate with each other too. Just think of a sneeze reflex. When you sneeze, almost every muscle in your body contracts almost instantaneously. That's a hell of a lot of communication in a very short space of time. So how does our body achieve this? Well, to put it simply, through hormones and nerves. But first we're going to look at hormones. So hormones are chemical messages, as opposed to electrical impulses, secreted by endocrine glands. Yes, there's another system in our body called the endocrine system. It's again a collection of organs with the sole purpose of secreting hormones. So here are some members of the endocrine system. We have the pituitary gland, for example, and that will secrete or release um, hormones that regulate water levels. We have the thyroid gland, which is important in releasing hormones which control your development during puberty. We have adrenal glands just above your kidneys and they will release the hormone adrenaline which is essential for your fight or flight response. In females we have the ovaries which release a whole series of hormones such as estrogen, progesterone which we'll learn about in another tutorial. And in males of course we have the testes which release testosterone. So I thought this video footage would help you understand what endocrine glands do. Endocrine glands, just like the sausages secreting fat, endocrine glands will secrete hormones. To make sense of this, we're going to look at this specific example, how adrenal glands secrete adrenaline in response to a fright. So remember, your adrenal glands are located just above your kidneys here. So let's say, for example, you get a scare, and for this scare I'm going to pick my own personal phobia, which is spiders. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with spiders. But anyway, let's say I've just seen a spider. What will happen is, an electrical impulse will reach the adrenal gland from the nervous system. The adrenal gland will secrete adrenaline. So this is the adrenaline because it communicates, I've drawn it in the shape of a mouth. The adrenaline will travel through the bloodstream to its target organ, which is the heart. So when it reaches a heart cell, it will bond to a receptor on the heart cell. So you can see there's a receptor there. It receives the hormone and then the heart will start to contract rapidly. So hormones use our bloodstream to reach their target cells. So, if you can say that hormones are chemical messages secreted by endocrine glands, which then travel in the bloodstream to reach their target cells, you've achieved aim one. Because that is how you describe how our cells communicate using hormones. So now we're going to look at the key differences between nervous and hormonal communication. So firstly, we know that hormones are chemicals and nerves are electrical impulses. Hormones are transported by the blood, whereas electrical impulses use neurons to get around the body. Because our blood travels slower than electricity, hormones travel slower than nervous messages or electrical impulses. But the effect an hormone has on the body will last longer. Finally, the action of hormones is much more general, whereas electrical impulses will target very specific regions in the body. For example, hormones which control growth will have to affect quite a lot of the body, whereas hormones which basically control a reflex response will normally control one muscle or two muscles or a specific gland. So to help us compare and contrast the two forms of communication, I've just got two quick video clips for you. So this is my dog responding to a toy. That is a reflex response. And you could see it was fairly rapid and very short lived. Um, it's a very specific action. It only really affected her neck muscles there. And obviously her eyes as well, the muscles that control her eyes. Um, so that highlights the key points for nervous communication. So now let's compare this to hormonal action. She was actually having a mad moment in the garden, but I slowed it down. But you see it's sped up now incredibly fast. And there you can see panting, heart beating, sustained, and so on. So m much slower to take effect, but it's far longer lasting. So our heart rate will be raised for a fairly lengthy period of time after the exercise. 
Also, you can see how much more general the effect of the hormone was as opposed to the nervous message, which only really affected one specific region. So those are the key differences between nervous and hormonal forms of communication. Aim 2 done. So now let's look at how messages are passed on between neurons. Okay, so now we're just focusing on the nervous system. So this is called synaptic transmission because a synapse is the gap between two nerve cells and we need to pass the message across that gap. So how does that happen? So firstly, we're going to be examining the gap between the axon terminal of one neuron and the dendron of another neuron. This gap is called a synapse, a very important word. So the first part is easy enough. An electrical impulse arrives at the axon terminal. Now inside the axon terminal, we will find structures called vesicles. Vesicles are like capsules made out of the same stuff cell membranes are made from. And inside, they basically hold proteins called neurotransmitter substances. So when an electrical impulse arrives, it stimulates the vesicles to move towards the end of the axon terminal and actually fuse with the membrane, releasing their contents into the synapse. So vesicles fuse with the presynaptic membrane, that's the membrane before the synapse, releasing neurotransmitter substances these are just proteins, you can actually in an exam write NT substances for short, into the synapse. So once in the synapse, the neurotransmitter substances diffuse across the synapse to the adjacent neuron. What that means is, basically, these neurotransmitter substances move from where they are in high concentration to low concentration to meet the uh, cell membrane of the next neuron. You can also see on this side that the vesicle membranes have actually become part of the cell membrane of the axon terminal. This is what we mean by fuse. So by becoming part of it, they've ejected their contents into the synapse, which is then diffused across. So once the neurotransmitters have diffused across the synapse, they bond to proteins embedded on the cell membrane of the dendron, or dendrite, and they basically bond to these receptor proteins, receptor molecules, and once they do that, an electrical impulse is generated in the next neuron and gets transmitted along it. So neurotransmitter substances bond with receptor proteins over here on the membrane of the next neuron and that generates an electrical impulse. So just a quick review of the process. An electrical impulse arrives at the axon terminal. This stimulates vesicles to fuse with the presynaptic membrane. The vesicles release their neurotransmitter substances into the synapse the neurotransmitter substances diffuse across the synapse, where they bind to receptor proteins on the postsynaptic membrane, the membrane after the synapse. This generates an electrical impulse in the postsynaptic membrane, which then travels along the next neuron. So that is how you explain how nerve cells communicate with each other through synapses. Final aim done.